Spider-Man Miles Morales has officially been confirmed to release on PC November the 18th for $50. And today they showed off a brand new gameplay trailer with all new features just for the PC. And I want to talk about some of those features and I want to talk about the PC requirements that they also showcased. So let's get into it. But first, I need to pay some bills and say thank you to the very first ever official sponsor of my channel, Keys Fan. Windows 11 and Office 2021 are currently the latest versions of Microsoft's operating system and its suite of Office applications. Both feature many innovations in security and ease of use, making them more popular than any previous version. KeysFan offers the best deals for legal, safe, and economical shopping. KeysFan is currently running their autumn sale with extra discounts, and you can shop with confidence from keysfan.com because customer service is supported, and if the key is invalid, refunds are available. KeysFan offers Windows 10 Pro keys for super discounts, just a little bit above $7. You can even get Microsoft Office 2019 or Microsoft Office 2021. If you're interested in picking up one of these mini office applications for a super discount, you can find the link in a pinned comment down below this video. Thank you, KeysFan, for being the first official sponsor of this video. As we can see in the trailer, we are getting unlocked frame rates, DLSS support, and DLSS 3 support. We will also have FSR support, even though that wasn't necessarily in the trailer. We will have ultra wide support. So if you have an ultra wide monitor, you are covered here. We will also have ray tracing. So it's very much just like Spider Man Remastered with all the same bells and whistles. Another thing that I'm I'm very happy about is the fact that I know modders will be all over this. Spider-Man Remastered has a ton of mods over on Nexus Mods, and I've talked about that before. I've used them quite extensively, and mods are definitely fun to play with, and I highly recommend checking them out. So I'm excited for the mod support on this game. But now let's talk about the PC requirements. And so if you look at the PC requirements, they are very similar to Spider-Man Remastered. And so if you can run Spider-Man Remastered on your PC, chances are you can also run Spider-Man Miles Morales on your PC. Now, one reason why I'm making the video is simply because I want to showcase how much better these requirements are as opposed to the standard minimum and recommended cookie cutter specifications. The developers have actually given us a chart and divided up target resolutions and target frame rates, and that is the way that specifications should be released to the public, in my opinion. Now, with all of that being said, these specifications could be a little bit better, and we're gonna talk about that. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and talk about the PC requirements for Spider-Man Miles Morales. Okay, so as you can see we have a minimum configuration targeting 720p 30 fps we have a recommended configuration targeting 1080p 60 fps and we have a very high configuration targeting 4k 60 fps after that we have two different ray tracing configurations one for amazing ray tracing which will target 1440p at 60 fps or 4k at 30 fps and we have an ultimate ray tracing option which will target 4k 60 fps so i would personally like to see a little bit more love for 1440p recommended specifications just because that is the next step after 1080p and more and more gamers are starting to adopt a 1440p resolution for their main gaming display. How come we don't have a standalone 1440p tier here? We have a 1080p, we have a 4K, we have a 720p, but we don't have a dedicated 1440p tier here. And I would personally like to see more developers do this type of chart but showcase a little bit more 1440p. On the minimum configuration, the graphics preset will be very low. And for the GPU recommendation, they are recommending a GeForce GTX 950 or AMD equivalent. And for the CPU, they are recommending an Intel Core i3-4160 or again, the AMD equivalent. And for the RAM, it will be eight gigabytes. And for the operating system across the board, it will be Windows 10. And for storage across the board, you will need 75 gigabytes of space available. The the only difference is that the minimum recommendation allows you to get away with just a standard hard drive, whereas all the other configurations recommend a solid state drive. And honestly, a solid state drive is something that everyone should be running these days. They're cheaper than ever. They are widely available. And honestly, it's one of the best upgrades you can give yourself. So if you're not using a solid state drive, 
I highly recommend you make that your very next upgrade. Now getting back over to the chart for the recommended configuration, they are targeting 1080p 60 FPS and the graphics preset will be set to medium. The Nvidia GPU is a 1060, the AMD GPU is a 580, the Intel CPU is a Core i5 4670 and the AMD CPU is a Ryzen 5 1600 and they are recommending 16 gigabytes of RAM. And for the very high preset, they are targeting 4K 60 FPS. The graphics preset will be very high. The Nvidia GPU will be the 3070, the AMD GPU will be the 6800 XT, and the Intel CPU will be a Core i5-11400, and the AMD CPU will be the Ryzen 5 3600, and again for RAM they are recommending 16 gigabytes. And for the amazing ray tracing preset, they are targeting either 1440p at 60 FPS or 4K at 30 FPS, and the graphics preset will be the high ray tracing high preset. The Nvidia GPU is the RTX 3070, and the AMD GPU is is the 6900 XT, the Intel CPU is the 11600K, and the AMD CPU is the Ryzen 7 3700X, again 16 gigabytes of RAM. And lastly, for the ultimate ray tracing configuration, they are targeting 4K 60 FPS with a high ray tracing, very high preset. The Nvidia GPU is the RTX 3080, and the AMD GPU is the 6950 XT. And for the Intel CPU, they recommend the i7 12700K or the AMD Ryzen 9 5900X. And for the RAM, the only difference here is that it is 32 gigabytes of RAM. Now, outside of all of that, when it comes to ray tracing, they're not being totally transparent here. Essentially, they're not telling you that you will need to use some type of upscaling technology with ray tracing. So on an AMD card, you would use FSR, but on an Nvidia card, you would use DLSS. Ray tracing is entirely way too demanding to just run brute force all the way out. And even if they were trying to recommend that you can run ray tracing in the game and target 4K 60, for example, there is no way a 3070 can do that. I have a RTX 3070 and I have a RTX 3080. And let me tell you, those cards are amazing. But the problem is ray tracing is just too demanding. There is no way you can take a RTX 3070 and play Spider-Man with high ray tracing settings and expect to get 4K 60 without using DLSS. That is not going to happen. And for the last two tiers regarding ray tracing, I wanna make something abundantly clear here. The 6900 and the 6950 XT are not that much different. It's basically like a 3090 and a 3090 Ti. In fact, I would wager, I think the gap is even a little bit less. AMD allows you to clock way higher than Nvidia, so I don't want somebody who has a 6800 XT or even a 6900 XT to feel like, oh wow, we can't do the final preset because we don't have a 6950 XT. That's a little bit disingenuous. I think the reason why they're doing that is because A, ray tracing is incredibly demanding, and B, Nvidia is better at ray tracing than AMD, but at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter because ray tracing is so demanding anyway, either platform, AMD or Nvidia, will still need to result to some type of upscaling, super sampling technology, so it doesn't really matter at that point. So all in all, with that being said, when I play Spider-Man, the game looks phenomenal. I play it at native 4K or at 1800p in a lot of cases, and I essentially never run ray tracing. Yeah, the ray tracing can be nice in certain instances, but it's just way too demanding and I prefer not to run DLSS if possible. I prefer native raw resolutions and native raw performance. And Spider-Man is not a game where you have to have ray tracing in order to enjoy it like Cyberpunk. Spider-Man is not Cyberpunk. So if you don't wanna run ray tracing or if you can't run ray tracing, that's okay. The game still looks great, it, it will still run fine, in fact it'll run better without ray tracing so I wouldn't overly worry about that too much. But hey, if you want to see the actual benchmarking numbers, be sure to get subscribed so you don't miss that because I will definitely do a benchmarking video on it. And if you want a preview of what that might look like, then check out this video right here where I benchmark Spider-Man Remastered on the PC with my RTX. 3080. And that's it. That's all I got for this video. Are you getting Spider-Man Miles Morales? Let me know in the comment section below. While you're down there, hit that like button because it goes a long way in helping me out. And until next time, E-Rock out.